Kicking butt at 11 o'clock, it's Pamela Anderson in the uncut, inflated version of Barb Wire. First on Film 4, Mariella Frostrop reports from this year's Empire Awards in London. Get all Oscars. It's, 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 it's a fact. We know that, but look, look, look. Did I get a nomination? No, and you know why? Because I because I ain't played none of them slave roles. I get my whipped. That's when you get the nomination. Kid, that's what Black I do. Black play a slave role, get a whipped, you get the nomination. The white boy play an idiot, they get the Oscar. Right, Maybe on. I should play, get me, find me a strip as a retarded slave, then I get the Oscar. Son, I have some bad news. We accidentally replaced your heart with a baked potato. You have about three seconds to live. What? Ladies and gentlemen, I'm afraid that my A-string has come loose and I'm going to have to restring my cello and start again. Or at least it wasn't my G-string. I can never be with anybody who doesn't take politics as seriously as I do. Do you mind while a hot dog is singing? Do you mean quiet while a hot dog is singing? Here. Remember, no eyes. Get a hell out of here. He, he, he. <laughs> as you remain silent. That movie has warped my fragile little mind. Mariella Frostrop. Thank you very much, everyone, and a very warm welcome to the Empire Awards. There's no denying that 1999 was a very big year for movies, a year in which George Lucas brought out a follow-up 22 years after the original, and everyone wished they'd adopted the same strategy with Police Academy. But first, a couple of points of order. Winners and presenters, once they've air-kissed, embraced, cried and thanked their mothers, could they please leave stage left, where they'll be whisked into a small tent-like structure for a quick souvenir photograph. It's painless and takes less than a minute, making it much better than sex, and it'll look nice on your mantelpiece. Secondly, this time around, Empire have splashed out on an assistant for me. Feeling that last year's event was a little on the frivolous side, they've invited a man whose name is synonymous with cinema. Last year, he body doubled for Tom Hanks. This year, he'll lend some much needed gravitas to the proceedings. Please welcome our very own Phantom Menace, Phil Jupitus. <laughs> All right, yes, good afternoon, filmmaking monkeys. How the hell are you? Right, oh, I'm on record as saying that I'd kill my mum to be in a film, and uh, when I meet people like you, I can find out, you know, how do you want her killed? Uh, <laughs> when? And do you need to see the body? So, <laughs> anyway, let's waste no further time on pleasantries. Mariella, let's kick off with the first award. OK, Phil. The first award today is Best British Actor, and the hotly contested shortlist looks remarkably like this. I have lost my gift. I am here to help you. Tell me, in your own words. It's 
It's as if my quill is broken. As if the organ of my imagination has dried up. As if the proud tower of my genius has collapsed. You must be Spike. Just check in. Thank you, God. The boy will not pass the council's test master. He's too old. Anakin will become a Jedi, I promise you. Do not defy the council master, not again. I shall do what I must, to be one. I never even remembered until you got me going. Well, look, you started in on this, and... Come, Mr. Will, you just sit there. You let me talk. Yes, the poor old man, you think it is. I've had the crazy old poof. Now, why are you here? Oh, shit, it's you. Brickety, it's my sister's birthday. Shit, we're meant to be having dinner. Okay, that's fine. No, I'm sure I can get out of it. No, I mean, if it's fine with you, I'll be your date. See, now, as a huge Star Wars fan, which I am, I have a slight problem with Ewan McGregor, you see, because he's Scottish, you know, all right, I'm Obi-Wan Kenobi, eh, you see. Whereas, if you listen to Alec Guinness, he's like, look, look, I'm, look, it's Eddie Izzard, isn't it? Uh, look, yeah, uh, Jedi, true story, good thing. Uh, <laughs> anyway, uh, to present the award, please, welcome to the stage one of my former girlfriends who is, quite frankly, Stalking me. Uh, so, so if we could get this over with quickly, uh, it would save a lot of emotional damage on my part. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, please welcome... Alicia Silverstone. Thank you, Phil. Um... Oh, yeah, thank you. <laughs> I told you not to get personal. <laughs> so, for Best British Actor, it is... Hugh Grant, Notting Hill. <laughs> I'm sure he'll be incredibly grateful for that round of applause, but unfortunately Hugh has had to rush off to Los Angeles for what I dare not think. But anyway, to accept... <laughs> Sorry. But to accept his award, please welcome to the stage producer from the Notting Hill team, Duncan Kenworthy. Hugh was uh, very sorry he couldn't be here. He would be even sorrier now. But uh, he, he, uh, he gave me a note. Um, in, in, he said, which says, Dear Duncan, in the unlikely event of me winning, please tell them I've always thought Empire was an unusually intelligent, funny, and good-looking magazine, and I now realize that it gets these qualities from its readers. Please thank them and everyone involved in the film very much, then do a special five-minute tribute to yourself. Cry if it feels right. Um, I'm not going to. The next category is the Best British Actress Award, which has been scooped for the last two years by the rather popular Kate Winslet. The competition, however, is very tough, so let's waste no more time and see who she's up against. To look at a thing is quite different from seeing a thing. And one does not see anything until one sees its beauty. Oh, really? Yes, really. So you're a tourist. Okay, I've seen you. I saw you, saw you at melanoma, I saw you at tuberculosis, I saw you at testicular cancer. I saw you practicing this. Practicing what? Telling me off. Is it going as well as you hoped? Just because the child wants coffee doesn't mean she should have it. It's ridiculous. A curly orphan. What? If you wish to argue, I insist we go elsewhere. And I insist I'll do as I please! Of course. Have you ever done differently? Don't do that because... Be... I'm your mummy, not her! The... 
The truth is, neither one of us had the slightest idea where this relationship is going. We can't predict the future. We don't have a relationship, Max. But we're friends. Yes, and that's all we're going to be. That's all I meant by relationship. You want me to grab a dictionary? I'm trying to make an impression, and she can't even be swiveled to her friends, that tiny little slit! Now, what's my doing and in front of you? Well, that's it. I give up. Kate Winslet there. I look at Kate Winslet and I think... Hideous kinky. Titanic. Three words I heard on my wedding night. <laughs> <laughs> to present the award for Best British Actress, we are indeed honoured to have with us one of Britain's great new acting talents. I'm told by those in the trade that he's something of a fanny magnet. Would you please welcome to the stage, Doug Ray Scott! Yes! Hello. Uh, the uh, award for Best British Actress goes to the very uh, lovely and very talented uh, Eleanor Bonham Carter for the Fight Club. Thanks very much. I love winning awards. Um, uh, I had a great time doing Fight Club. Um, I'm a bit surprised, I suppose, because I, I thought it was just a supporting girlfriend party who smoked a lot in the background, but, um, but I did have a great time, principally because I was paid to smoke, and, uh, <laughs> um, and I was put up for the, uh, the Four Seasons for six months, and because my part wasn't that big, I just hung around by the pool, and, uh, and David Fincher was a great director, and for all his brilliance, apart from his brilliance, he, he actually thought that um, he was my character, so all I had to do was copy him, so... <laughs> Uh, so I had great fun and was paid really well and now I get this and it doesn't get much better. Thank you very much. Helena, first of all, congratulations. You seemed slightly nonplussed by... Uh, the I shouldn't have been nonplussed because of course you know that they tend to tell you. <laughs> I shouldn't probably say. No, it wasn't that, but you were very self-effacing and, and you I'm did say I'm self-effacing because you can't, you know, you can't be the opposite really. But I am naturally self-effacing anyway. I mean, I know that people have been uh, saying the same thing to you for years and you haven't played a kind of bodice ripper for years, but the Fight Club was in sort of direct contrast to perhaps the popular uh, impression of Helena Bonham Carter. Mm. Was that one of the appealing things about the part? It was flattering. I'm not sure, com perhaps not entirely flattering that I was approached to play this sort of death-obsessed, you know, Chain smoker, which is probably very, <laughs> unfortunately, closer to the truth than it the is other type parts. Of yeah. So it's sort of, uh, so it was refreshing. Yeah, I have actually sort of done other sort of modern parts, but it doesn't. But I think no matter what I do, I'll always be sort of like associated with the corset parts. But um, I was only, I suppose, non plus because I am like the smallest link in the whole Fight Club picture because it is really about Brad and Edward and a boys' m movie, and it is such a fantastic film. But it got so. Uh, I'm glad for getting this award, if only that, I think it's the only award that this film has got, um, and yet it's such an extraordinary piece of filming. Now, the Best British Director category brings together a typically esoteric selection of British movie makers. These homegrown talents are experts at showing off every aspect of the British way of life. In fact, cod pieces, second-hand books, drug abuse and karaoke all managed to get a look in. Anyway, we won't delve too deeply there, let's take a look at the nominees. Well, no more fireworks. They will be soothing after the excitements of Lady Viola's audience. <laughs> Have her then, but you're a lordly fool. She's been plucked since I saw her last, and not by you. It takes a woman to know it. I see friends from university. Clever chaps. Uh, been in the business longer than you. They're scraping by on seven, eight thousand a year. Yeah, it's no life. What sort of acting do you do? Films, mainly. Oh, splendid. Oh, well done. How's the pay in movies? Mm. I mean, last film you did, what did you get paid? Fifteen million dollars. Hey, come out tonight. We can sit on the steps by the dock mission. Bring your saloon for Peggy. 
What do you want to go bring fat ass with you for? Shut it, Tarek. She might hear ya. Too late. She already fucking did. Say, wouldn't you like to know what's going on in my mind? So let me get right to the point. I don't pop my cork for every man I see. I failed the physical with her. Oh, please, just go away. Fuck, she's coming over. Oh, fuck, I'm starting to shake. Whoa, whoa, be cool, Jit. Nothing happened, remember? Come on, act like an adult. Be false. Oh, my God. Oh, my God, here it comes. Here comes the pain. Hold tight. Oh, my God! All right. To present the award for Best British Director, please welcome to the stage a lady who's doing so well in the film game that people think she's Hollywood born and bred. But from our very own home counties, please welcome Minnie Driver. I'm from Fulham. <laughs> OK, oh... The best director is Roger Michelle. Oh, not in here. Thank you um, for this lovely, lovely award. Thank you to Richard and Duncan for offering me this gig in the first place. Thanks to a truly fantastic cast and crew. Um, thank you particularly to Tim McInerney, who happens to be here today. Um, and thank you to my wife. Thanks all very much. message, now is a good time to visit our planet, for there is an event taking place which we call the Millennium, and we will mark this event with one of our greatest rituals, the party. There will be millions of these parties taking place on Earth. Some will have what we call music. Some will have what we call dancing. Some parties will be very large, and some will be very small. Some will have people in strange costumes, and some will have people in even stranger costumes. But if the party doesn't serve one of these, you're either at the wrong party or on the wrong planet. You can have a mortgage and a separate account that brings together your credit card bills and personal borrowing with all repayments at mortgage rates. Open plan borrowing with the Woolwich. If you're without, ring 0845 607 1111. Size. Here's the good news. Less is now officially more. Duncan, congratulations. Do you now feel that um, you've exhausted the Hugh stumbling Englishman genre, or do you feel very much a sort of commitment to Hugh uh, as a, a team thing with you and Richard Curtis? 
Well, it may come as a surprise to everyone, and maybe even to Hugh, but it wasn't a part that was written for him. I mean, it, it really... Good God! <laughs> it was, um... Uh, it was just, it was the idea that Richard uh, just loved, and for the longest time we held off, because I think it doesn't make any sense to put yourself in thrall to any particular creative idea until you've got the script that you want. Uh, and so we got the script right, and because it has this central idea of a very famous actress and a completely unknown boy, we thought, okay, if we get Julie Roberts, are we missing a trick if we cast a very famous actor as the unknown? Uh, and so we sort of toyed with the idea of casting a complete unknown, and then we thought, we remembered uh, how hard we tried to find someone good for four weddings, and Hugh is immensely um, clever at the way he reads Richard's lines. So, uh, so, and it worked terribly well. I mean, so going forward, I think it'll be the same again. Richard will write what Richard writes, and uh, if there's a part for Hugh in it, then, then great. The next award is the Empire Reader's Choice for Best British Film. They should know, they're the popcorn juggling, cash paying public, and their selection for the shortlist looks like this. What are you going on about, you big daft get? What bleeding tickle tackle? Molasses, all the bloody children in a moss sing. Well, he must be seeing things, George, because they were all done, all six of them. She's right, George. You know, believe me, you're bloody looking. Sadie, come here. Get stuff. Hey, hey, language. I'll stuff you in a minute, you cheeky little bleeder. Now get here and get him off. Tonight I'm Chip Travolta. I'm Peter Popper. I'm going to never, never land with my chosen family, man. We're going to get more spaced out than Neil Armstrong ever did. Anything could happen tonight, you know? This could be the best night of my life. I've got yeah. 73 quid in my back burner. I'm going to watch the lot, man. The milky bars are on me. Yeah! I I've got to go, Murray, but what can I tell you? It's happened at last, eh? It's like at the races, when you know you're onto a certainty and you're feeling, this is it. She is the one. I am the one. I don't want to interfere on the thing, but she's just split up from her boyfriend. That's right, isn't it? Maybe. And she's in your house. Yes. And you get on very well. Yes. Well, isn't this perhaps a nice opportunity to... Slip the one. Mr. Fennyman, allow me to explain about the theatre business. <laughs> the natural condition is one of insurmountable obstacles on the road to imminent disaster. So what do we do? Nothing. Strangely enough, it all turns out well. How? I don't know. It's a mystery. In the award, we're honoured to have straight from her duties with the royal family. Please welcome Carolina Hurd. Hello. <laughs> Shall I just do it? <laughs> right. And the winner of the best film is Notting Hill. Um, this is fantastic. Um, I thought that we'd made so much money that we'd uh, gone into that exclusive category of films that were too successful to be considered any good. Um, in fact, um, I, I was reading uh, the Guardian article, My Media, and Keith Floyd, when he was asked what his current uh, favourite British film was, said, um, well, I saw nothing good in Notting Hill. He didn't even mention his favourite. And um, the BFI... Uh, no, the... Um, uh, um, a film 99, when asked for their um, top 100 films, the headline was Notting Hill, not one of Britain's favourite films. So uh, this is, it's great to know that uh, the Empire readers have, uh, have uh, more, more vision on, uh, on this than here. But thanks very, very much. Roger, where are you? Tim, say something. Well, I'd like to thank Roger for mentioning me. <laughs> The next category is Empire Reader's International Selections. And first of all, we look at the key role of director. 
Previous winners of this highly prestigious category have included Steven Spielberg, Terry Gilliam, Cameron Crowe and Oliver Stone. So the pecking order is pretty damn high. Any one of the five contenders would be a notable addition to that list and their checkbooks would probably make pretty good viewing as well. But hey, let's take a look at their work. Jesus, I'm sorry. Ow! Christ! By the ear, man. Oh, oh that was perfect. Oh. Ah. You refer to the prophecy of the one who will bring balance to the force. You believe it's this boy? I don't presume to. But you do. Revealed, your opinion is. I request the boy be tested, Master. Oh. Trained as a Jedi, you request for him, hmm? which uh, certainly had a big impact on me in the last year, but out of all of them, uh, only the Fight Club made me realise I'd look good with big tits and a black eye. <laughs> Sadly, the winner of Best Director Award can't be here today, but he has shot us this exclusive budget-busting acceptance speech. So, in the grand tradition of the movies, let's roll camera. Thank you so much for this award. Um, I really wish I could have been there. I have a newborn baby, and we're working on the new film, so I haven't been able to get out anywhere, but um, I hear it's a very fun event and hopefully I'll get to attend it one day. The role of honour in the Best Actor category is, as you'd imagine, long and highly impressive. Last year, the winner was Tom Hanks. Before that, it was Kevin Spacey, then Morgan Freeman and Robert De Niro. And indeed, this year's handful of hopefuls are of similarly legendary status. Let's take a look at what they do for a living. The first rule of Fight Club is, you do not talk about Fight Club. The second rule of Fight Club is, you do not talk about Fight Club. Third rule of Fight Club, someone yells stop, goes limp, taps out, the fight is over. Fourth rule, only two guys to a fight. Fifth rule, one fight at a time, fellas. <laughs> Helps if you open the door. And you might be... This is 007. If you're Q, does that make him R? Ah, yes, the legendary 007 wit. Mm. Or at least half of it. Okay, so what do you need? Besides a miracle. Guns. Lots of guns. No, Alice. Maybe because you're my wife. Maybe because you're the mother of my child. And I know you would never be unfaithful to me. You are very, very sure of yourself, aren't you? 
Now, I'm sure of you. A handful of uh, blockbusters there. Each one uh, fronted by a stunningly talented sexual dynamo with the ability to moisten gussets at 20 paces. But which one of these hormone howitzers will be going home with the goods today? To present the award, please welcome to the stage a legendary ivory tinkler, a man far too good to be Dave of Chaz and Dave. <laughs> the composer of the soundtracks of The World Is Not Enough, Tomorrow Never Dies and Independence Day, Mr David Arnold. <laughs> My look-alike, Mr. Pierce Brosnan. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen, and um, thank you to all the readers of Empire Magazine for giving me this great award. Um, it has been a great ride, I must say, doing Bond, and uh, long may it last. Um, I want to say thank you to my children, Charlotte, Christopher, Sean, Dylan, my mum, and uh, my good wife to be, Keely Shea, and uh, lots of love. Thank you very much. Piers, first of all, congratulations. Thank you. It looks like The World Is Not Enough is about to uh, become the biggest grossing Bond film ever. Now, wh what do you think you ascribe this kind of continued success of the series? Because normally people get a bit sick of uh, the same movie it's, over again. Well, it all depends on who you talk to, actually. I mean, some people are sick of it and some people love it. It depends. But, you know, this one has been great. And uh, I think, you know, Michael Apted has certainly played a big hand in it. He's a fantastic director and he's really, you know, character-driven storyteller. Uh, and I think that's what happened with this Bond film. Because this is your last um, Bond, the next one. Do you think it'll be hard to leave him behind or do you think they'll be able to lure you back? Uh, well, I, well, we'll have to just see how the career goes, you know? I mean, I, I don't want to kind of be presumptuous and say something. You don't want to shut any doors, great. do you? I don't want to shut the bloody doors, <laughs> you know? I've had doors shut on me many times. You know, so, you know, it is certainly something that I was terrified going into the bloody thing. I mean, because I didn't want to fail and I didn't want to be the guy that was going to put the kind of nail in the coffin of Bond. So there was a lot at stake. There was a lot at stake for Martin Campbell, who directed GoldenEye, and there was a lot at stake for myself, hugely. And you have to you know, acknowledge that. Um, and so, you know, to be here today and to get this lovely award from Empire and from the people, you know, the people who go to the movies and pay the money to see films, uh, is just lovely sense of accomplishment. We now move on to the Empire Inspiration Award, which recognizes true mavericks of the movies, the people who change the rules, the people who innovate and indeed invigorate the cinema-going experience. This year's Empire Inspiration Award goes to a terrifyingly talented man. He's a luminary of the theatre who is equally at home with film. He speaks Shakespearean like it's his mother tongue and makes it thrilling for the multiplex generation. As an actor, he's worked with Woody Allen, Robert Altman, Al Pacino, Robert De Niro, Gerard Depardieu, Denzel Washington and Will Smith. As a director, he was daring enough to successfully take on Hitchcock at his own game and has turned his hand to comedy, horror, and now even a musical. A Shakespearean musical, of course, in the wonderful Love's Labour's Lost. He's made a better version of Henry V than Laurence Olivier and knew that it is essential for history to have a definitive version of Hamlet on film, which he duly delivered in 70 mil for four hours. He had the balls to write his autobiography at 27, knows just about everything there is to know about dinosaurs, and apparently his mum's Julie Christie. In every respect, he is a true Renaissance man. Shall we see why? Did not I dance with you in Brabant once? Did not I dance with you in Brabant once? I know you did. How needless was it then to ask the question? I want to dance. Don't ask me. I want to dance. Don't ask me. I want to dance. Miss you with you. My heart won't let my feet. 
pretty things they should do. You know what? You're lovely. And so what? I'm lovely. But oh, what you do to me? I'm like an ocean wave that's bumped on the shore. I feel so absolutely stumped on the floor. When you dance, you're charming and you're gentle. Especially when you do the continental. But this feeling isn't purely mental. For heaven rest us, I'm not asbestos. And that's why I won't dance. Why should I? I won't dance. How could I? I won't dance. Messy but cool. I know that music leads the way to romance. So if I hold you in my arms, I'll dance. And it's Brenna. Thank you, thank you very much. A very, a March 24th at cinemas all over the country. Uh, <laughs> I- inspirational table over there. Uh, it, it's impossible to know what to say. Uh, um, uh, I'm astonished and uh, um, I'm, I'm very, very, very touched and, and I'm very, very grateful. Thank you very much, Empire. Thank you. Now, um- to me, it seemed that the Inspiration Award should have gone to you for, for managing to get a studio to let you make a, 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 another Shakespeare film, but this time set as a 30s musical with Love's Labour's Lost. Now, surely they must have all been scratching their heads when you turned up with that idea. Yeah, tough sell, because they know it and never heard of the play. Uh, and then I made the mistake of saying, you know, it, it was the only play in the entire canon of Shakespeare that was not performed for 200 years after he died, because uh, people didn't think it was very good. Faces dropped. Uh, and then uh, I said, That doesn't help your cause, does it? doesn't does help. It? No, I realised I was digging my own grave, but I said, but you know, the thing is, uh, we're going to do it as a musical. Uh, and they said, oh, the, the genre in film that hasn't worked for the last 30 years. Right, okay, so obscure Shakespeare and comedy, romantic film, musical. Have a check. Uh, yeah, have, yeah, please, you must do this. What about the, um, the sort of juggling act, the perennial juggling act between directing, you know, raising the money for films, appearing in them, etc.? Does it ever get a bit a mite confusing? It was on this one. I mean, there's more Tonto barking mad on this one uh, than ever before. The biggest thing being trying to remember these king dance moves. Uh, but I probably started about a month before the rest of the company. And I cunningly gave myself less to do. Uh, <laughs> and extra honest. rehearsal time, that's extra very unfair. Rehearsal time. Well, I didn't get any time when we started, because they were all there practicing every time I was doing acting scenes with them. So they got my time that way. Chips, Britain's most popular choice. Chips. McKin, you just can't help yourself. Introducing Weller's revolutionary on-off hair colouring system. When you feel like you're ready for a change, it gives you the confidence to choose the deep colour you want. Then if you want, you can just go back. The Weller on-off hair colouring system. On for long-lasting colour. Off to go back with a gentle vitamin C enriched formula. Weller, beautiful hair needs an expert. Papa, désirez-vous quelque chose, Papa? Rien, Fleur. Voulez-vous autre chose? Un peu de miel. Encore quelque chose, Papa? This 
qu'il y a du bois avec ici euh... Laissez-moi vous aider, mon père. Merci. Par ici Oui, oui. category voted for by the readers of Empire magazine. The best film award is the ultimate accolade, the film that the Empire readers would take on DVD to a desert island. So let's take a look at those box office favourites. Daddy's back. How could you do this to me on national television? Because you're not quite evil enough. Well, it's true. You're quasi-evil. You're semi-evil. You're the margarine of evil. You're the Diet Coke of evil. Freeze! You did. No, I didn't. You said whoopsie daisies. No one says whoopsie daisies, do they? I mean, unless there is no unless, because no one has said whoopsie daisies for what fifty years, and even then, it was um, it was just little girls with blonde ringlets. Exactly. Right. So here we go again. Oh, oh, whoopsie daisies. Oh. <laughs> Any celebrity, who'd you fight? Live or dead? Doesn't matter, who'd be tough? Hemingway. You? Shatner. I'd fight William Shatner. As is the custom of these things, our intrepid team uh, was sent out to track down the producer of the winning epic and to bring back a lengthy, you know, cigar-toting half-hour acceptance speech. Uh, sadly, they could only afford to secure uh, slightly less than 30 seconds with a great man, so please prepare for this blink-and-you'll-miss-it moment with the producer of the best film. Please cock your contacts for Mr Joel Silver. Thank you very much for this award. We love Empire Magazine. Thank you for voting The Matrix the best picture and uh, hope you're there for Matrix 2 and 3. Thank you. Now for the Empire Movie Masterpiece. This award recognizes truly significant films that introduced an unparalleled standard of filmmaking. Films that dramatically changed people's view of cinema and the cinema-going experience. To introduce the winner of the Empire Movie Masterpiece Award, please welcome to the stage Radio One's very own film buff, Mark Commode. The recipient of the award this year is somebody whose career has been as controversial and diverse as it's been successful. He's done political movies, he's done war movies, he's done uh, dark satires, he's even done a, a rock musical. Now, the Movie Masterpiece Award, it, it's, um, it's a political thriller. When um, JFK opened in America, I was, I was there and I saw it in a public cinema. And one of the most memorable things about it was that about two-thirds of the way through the film, there is a speech in which Kevin Costner um, tells us about the magic bullet theory. And what happened was, he got to the moment when he was talking about this, and he said, I would now like to address one of the grossest lies ever forced upon the American population. And something really strange happened. Half the audience, literally half the audience in a paying cinema, got up and broke into spontaneous applause. I've only ever seen that happen once elsewhere, and that was when the shark got blown up at the end of Jaws. It was exactly the same kind of reaction. 
To have made a film that touched people in that kind of way is, I think, one of the highest accolades that any filmmaker could possibly achieve. Before we welcome into the stage, let's just have a quick look at that movie masterpiece. And then shots rang out. Mary fell to the ground right away. She was yelling, they're shooting, they're shooting, get down. I just stood there watching. The driver had stopped. I don't know what was wrong with that driver. Then, out of the corner of my eye, I saw a flash of light in the bushes. And that last shot just ripped his head off. I looked up. And I saw smoke coming from over there on the knoll. That's a good spot, Chief. For the headshot. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, for JFK, the recipient of uh, this year's Movie Masterpiece Award, uh, please welcome to the stage Oliver Stone. It's really nice to see uh, in America, whenever JFK is repeated in the press, they always put initials after it, J.F.K. I keep writing to the newspapers, I say, please change it and call it what it is. And they never do because grammar requires them to have dots after JFK. <laughs> it is an honor and a great achievement for me to, to be here tonight because this, this film has a really ambivalent history in America. In 1991, it, it came out in 1992 in England. And ever since then, my life has never been the same. But when you hit a national nerve, it's very difficult to be appreciated in your own country by your own people. And sometimes it takes another country, another people, to reach out and recognize some of the truths that transcends these borders. In a sense, the eight, nine years are very sad to me. And I accept this award with great ambivalence because the movie meant so much to me. It was the apex of my career to date. But it has been rele relegated to the national hole of black, uh, the black hole of memory in my country. And it is so nice, and I'm, that's why I am here today. Because I really want to acknowledge this film more than myself. And said the film is important, and I hope to God it lasts. So tonight, today, is a great honor that a nation has responded. Thank you. Well, Oliver, first of all, congratulations. Were you at all surprised uh, when the call came through in terms of JFK being nominated as a movie masterpiece? It, it was quite some time. Of course I was. I was very heartened because, you know, the film is at a... Uh, ambivalent past and was opened in 91 in, in America and did very well overseas. Uh, extraordinarily shocking numbers, but there's been a constant uh, backlash against it in the uh, political press in America for about nine years and it's changed my life. It's like I crossed the Rubicon, you know, I never was the same. Uh, it was the apex of my life as, as an, ex, as an uh, ambition. Maybe not, I hope, you know, to go further, but, you know, I can't do those kinds of movies that easily because I'm, I'm too too noticeable, too, too much of a figure. But I think it's very hard for, for British audiences to sort of get their heads around the fact that, that making a movie like that, which to us is, is political, but you know, in, in the sort of broadest sense of the word and a fantastic yeah. movie, should actually have a, a detrimental impact on, on your career. I don't see how anything that would be cause debate or provoke debate or make you begin to ask the question would harm a country's uh, ethos, it can't. But the point was that we're no longer Greece, we're Rome. And the sense was that there was no debate. It was, are you a conspiracy theorist or are you not? What kind of debate is that? That's the most ridiculous debate I've ever heard. Let's talk about the 153 facts in the movie. I've always said that, you know. There's too many uh, uh, inconsistencies in this story for it to have been Oswald. That is a clearly was a black op, what they call a black operation. It was run by professionals. It was done professionally. It was covered up and it succeeded. And the people who say that most of these things can't succeed are full of shit. 
because the, the fact of the matter is that most conspiracies of, of that nature can succeed and have. another very special award which also recognizes an outstanding contribution to cinema. It's called the Lifetime Achievement Award and it celebrates a body of work that has influenced Empire Magazine, its readers and just about everyone in the universe. This year's winner is a household name who needs no introduction but to give us an introduction just in case we've gone blank when it comes to you know household stuff please raise your glass you know I thought it seemed redundant to me but I'm saying it. Please raise your glasses for the fabulous Brenda Blethyn. Um, it's a real honour to be asked to present this war to an absolutely fabulous actor. He's also an absolutely fabulous bloke as well. Um, he's a... His work in the British um, cinema is, as we all know, is quite fantastic. And he still gets all the jobs going. He's, he's always inundated with work. And on top of all of that, this week he was nominated for yet another Oscar. And for those of you who haven't twigged, we'll see a couple of clips now from his wonderful performances. Doubtless you will let me know what immensely worthwhile, or at least useful thing, that it is you find to do. I wasn't intending to leave here to be entirely useless. I expect I'll find some other way to be of use. In other parts of the world, I suppose there are other ways. Of course. Are you so stupid you imagine you're going to find a more gratifying life? What you will find is people like the poor people who get left here. Only nobody takes care of them half as well. And you won't be able to take care of them either. There's no taking care of anybody. I'll tell you what I'll do. I'll take this lot Quite now. Quite revolting. Hey? I'll take this lot now. You wrap them up and do us a favour, Adrian. Yeah. Shorten the sleeves, will you, love? I'm not a gorilla. I gather you've uh, been in India for about uh, two years, huh? Yeah, shooting tigers. Oh, really? That's been... Uh, <clears throat> the, uh, the carriage bill, sir? Yeah. Well, I'm afraid it's, um, uh, 200 pounds. Ah. Uh, but of course, if you interest me, ah. we can charge it. Oh, no, no. no. <laughs> please, please. There's a, there's a bounty for shooting tigers, you know. Ah, well, I mean, yes, there's no... 50 pounds ahead. Yeah. Really, I, there's no need uh, to, to, to these pay... These are me. wrapped in little bundles. I see, 200. yes. 200. Well, there's no need to pay... No, much. that's quite all right. Yes. Yes, you must have, uh, shot an awful lot of tigers, sir. Yes, I used machine gun. <laughs> <laughs> Ladies? <laughs> Hey, Charlie! Hello, Charlie! Hi, Charlie! Lovely, oh. Charlie! Ciao, Charlie! Nice, Charlie! Good to see you, Charlie! Sweet, Charlie! <laughs> well, I thought, the coming out present. Very nice, very nice. Um, now, what would you like? <laughs> Everything. <laughs> the winner of the Empire Lifetime Achievement Award is, of course, Michael Caine. I don't have a speech ready. I'm so insecure about the awards. I didn't think I was going to get this one. <laughs> a lifetime achievement is usually given to someone who's uh, sitting at home, elderly man like myself, pruning roses or collecting stamps or something. And I feel I should be at the end of my career. But what have actually happened today is that um, this is my lunch hour. I'm filming a movie called China in the East End. And I haven't eaten today. Instead of which, I've got an award, which, you know, is from the Empire magazine. 
and it means it's from the people, which is extremely important to me. One of the drawbacks of a Lifetime Achievement Award <clears throat> is this sort of clips that they show. You, you start off as a bright young thing and age 30 years in three or four minutes. <laughs> it's quite scary. What I'm going to do is say thank you very much to everybody. And it's a great honor, truly, a really great honor. Because it's not always in, good to be a prophet in your own country. And I've always felt in England that um, from the established press, I was always a bit of a joke. And uh, thank you for proving them wrong. I'm Mariella Frostrup. This has been the Empire Awards of the year 2000. Thanks for coming and many, many, many thanks to my lovely, lovely assistant. It's been a huge pleasure um, as I'm never going to get an acting gig so just keep making the damn things and I'll be sat there in row G, seat 27, big bucket full of popcorn. I'll be moaning about them, I'll be slagging them off, I'll be laughing about them and I'll be loving every goddamn minute of it. Thank you very much. Ta-ta. Thank you very much. Take in the many talents of Pamela Anderson in Black PVC. Barb Wire is next on Film 4. Look beyond the image, read between the lines, discover this is not the best of all possible worlds and learn how to mix the perfect mind.